Okay, this is chapter 18 of the book God dictated to me as he dictated the Torah to Moses. Literally, every word, every sentence, every paragraph, every page, and every title are from God. Keith, write this down. As in, type this. Uh, go over here. Go to the Jewish Virtual Library and read everything they have on the Holy Spirit. Or Elijah. Just go do some reading. I'll tell you what to copy later. And uh, then put it on your notepad. And we'll eventually get it to WordPress. You know, he copy a lot of things. A lot of scripture. And then he'd fill in it in between to make it all work man we take paragraphs move them up move them down throw them out i'm like what are you doing to our paragraphs that was too many get it for and he says don't question god okay sorry <laughs> what is he gonna do <laughs> i hope he doesn't club you one okay this is 18. Signs importance, and here's what to know, because once I really get into this, you're going to just be going, oh, man, this is all that. Uh, it's, a, it's a classic example of what kind of depths they'll go to, to say a prophecy has been fulfilled when it has not, not been fulfilled. They just make stuff up. Uh, Signs and portents. There's a sign. You see a sign and that means, you know, there's going to be, let's say, a war or something. And a portent, but by the name given that sign, you know, in, in the Hebrew translation would be um, a portent. That when that happens, there's going to be pillaging and uh, towns destroyed and this and that. As one defeated army carries out the inhabitants of the town they defeated. Something like that. Uh, I guess you could Google those two words. <clears throat> the book of Matthew of the Holy Bible, New Testament, first book, has many statements of prophecy fulfilled that are deceptive and false. This includes references to prophecy that is not prophecy by unnamed prophets. In Matthew 1, the angel of the Lord, in a dream of Joseph, said, this is where the fabrication begins, on the prophecy of Isaiah, it turns out. Well, you have to go find it. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet. So he doesn't give you another name. Saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call him his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So the dream says his name is Jesus. That's Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. You don't really want me to say that. Manuel turns out to be the son, it looks like, Isaiah and his concubine. Okay, she's never called a virgin. She's called a young woman. And she's pregnant. He's would be getting to it. But Emmanuel, God with us, all his children were named by God with names like that. They're signs and portents. <laughs> there's no virgin again the, 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 the Gentile says uh, Jews you don't know how to read your book it's prophetic of Jesus Christ but yet they have to doctor everything up to make him kind of fit and quite frankly they, they blew it because they can't get past 11 and 53 he's not from the stump of Jesse he's from the banished line of the ancestral tree of the kings of Judah that's how Matthew starts. That's their first that's their first book of the New Testament. First page. 
the kings of Judah ended up uh, some made up name and, and, then, and then Joseph and then there's Jesus. Banished. Why do you think Isaiah 11 says, Spirit of God shall light upon the twig. The twig, very small part of an ancestral tree is a twig. <clears throat> of the shoot that grows from the stump of Jesse. Again, the only ancestral tree we know of became banished, cut down. What's left? The stump. Okay, Jesus comes from the, the tree, the fallen tree. Isaiah 11, the man described, the anointed one, Moshe, descendant of King David, Jesse's King David's father, um, comes from the stump. Just another ancestral tree. David had hundreds of kids or wives or both. Yeah, it could be anything. We do not have an ancestral tree from David into Moshe. It's just not there. I know for a fact I'm him because I fit the verse. Isaiah 11, 1. Because the Spirit of God entered me, lit upon, entered me, and that's what they did with Ezekiel, the key to 53. And uh, then I could hear God speak. And Ezekiel says the exact same thing. God's talking to him. And then he says, the Spirit entered me. That had been the Holy Spirit, the angel of God's presence. And then I could hear his words. Because God's in his Spirit. Isaiah 11 may just as well read. The Spirit of God in God, the lit upon the twig of the shoot of the stump of Jesse. Immediately you become a man of divine beings. It's the angel of his presence in God. Angel of his presence, there's an angel, and his body is the spirit of God. It's not human form with wings. Everyone, Jewish people, of your prophets who could speak God's words in any manner, the Lord said to me, or you just have verse after verse of God talking, that means they're men and divine beings because that's how God communicates with the man. He manipulates your mind. It's like a vision. You can just, it's almost like you're seeing the conversation happen. His voice, your voice. Um, I don't know. It's really amazing to hear God speak um, because that's how he does it. That's why he goes to one man. He went to Moses. Moses, man, divine beings. I can show you several instances of that in the Torah. But um, what? <laughs> I suppose it's sick to the spirit. But Moses was man, divine. So was David. Just saying. The sentence, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken of the Lord by the prophet, is an example of writing a verse that you do not want to be verified by the reader. The prophet is easy to identify as Isaiah and his account of Emmanuel. And his account of Emmanuel has nothing to do with the birth of a child named Emmanuel by a virgin. The Hebrew word used by Isaiah is young woman, who is the concubine, I believe, of Isaiah. Well, he's married to the prophetess. It looks like they're almost in a hiding place to meet with Ahaz, the king of Jerusalem. <laughs> you know, they're, they're in a conduit by the pools, which I guess is the uh, temple area. Upper pools, it says. Yeah, they're sneaking around. And she's pregnant. Doesn't say anything about being a virgin. The Lord said to Isaiah, Go out with your son, Shear Jashub, to meet in a house at the end of the conduit of the upper pool. Shear Jashub is footnoted to a man. Here's the portent. Only a remnant will turn back. That's what... Shir Jashub's man. Isaiah said to Ahaz, Assuredly, my Lord will give you a sign of his unaccord. Look, 
The young woman is with child and about to give birth to a son. Let her name him Emmanuel. Emmanuel is footnoted to mean with us is God. That's Isaiah writing a prophecy. I guess. We'll get to it. Isaiah writes, I was intimate with the prophetess, and she conceived and bore a son. And the Lord said to me, Name him Mahar Shalhashbes. Mahar Shalhashbes is footnoted to mean pillage, hastens, looting speeds. You see, God's naming all of his children. Okay, and suddenly, Emmanuel is named. God is with us. With us is God. That's, that's just more reason to believe that that's Isaiah's child. He's, he's naming all of his kids signs and portents. And with us is God. That's for Judah. Because they're fearing the attack of the Assyrians. And actually more. You're going to hear a lot more than just the Assyrians. As a matter of fact, the Assyrians come to, end up coming to help. Um, Isaiah does not give account of the mother of only a remnant turned back. That's how, I, instead of those Arabic names or whatever they are, Aramaic, yeah. The mother of only a remnant will turn back. As she symbolizes the bride of God, the Jewish people themselves, who is absent until the remnant returns in repentance. The remnant does come back. That's the 13 tribes and the exiles. Gathered as one man, Israel, it has to be all 13 tribes. It cannot be 10 lost tribes. And not only that, Israel tells you, the half tribe of Manasseh, who's, no, it wasn't the Ephraimite. Uh, Ephraim? Settled in Jerusalem. Well, now it's eight lost tribes because you got two of them settled in Jerusalem. Oh, uh, you just look at the thirteen tribes returned to Jerusalem. Just read Ezra. I mean, you can't when they gather as one man. It has to be a hundred percent of them. That's all exiles. Some people don't get that concept right. Isaiah writes. So, I will wait for the Lord who is hiding his face from the house of Jacob, and I will trust in him. Here stand I and the children the Lord has given me as signs and portents in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells on Mount Zion. That's what we're trying to get to, Mount Zion. We're not trying to get to the Temple Mount. That's how we want Mount Zion. Each of Isaiah's children, only a remnant will turn back. With us is God. That's Emmanuel. And pillage Haitians, looting speeds, have a meaning as a sign and a portent. The book of Isaiah, the book of two kings, and the book of two chronicles provide the historical account to understand the names of the children the Lord gives Isaiah as signs and portents. The prophetess is footnoted to be the wife of Isaiah and the one, young woman about to give birth who is with Isaiah, Shalzahub and Ahaz at the end of the conduit of the upper pool would be his concubine. That's an opinion, of course, but it sure does seem to fit, particularly because of the naming of Emmanuel with us as God, which presumably comes from God in one form or another. In the days of King Pekah of Israel, King Tiglath Peleser of Assyria came and captured Jean, Abel, Be, Micah, Jonah, Kadesh, Hazer, Gilead, Galilee, the entire region of Naphtali and deported all the inhabitants to Assyria. Hoshi, 
son of Elah, conspired against Pekka, son of Ramah, attacked him and killed him. There won't be a test on all this. <laughs> Again, it's just to show Matthew's, you know, but you get this out of those three books. You've got to be able to put books together to understand Basically, we're getting to the age of Emmanuel when he comes to know right from wrong. That's what all this is about. King Rezin of Aram and King Pekka, son of Ramalia of Israel, advanced on Jerusalem for battle. They, they had already defeated the northern kingdom and deported them. I've mentioned that many times. That the northern kingdom was defeated by Assyria and uh, deported, and then they imported Gentiles. And now they're coming after Judah. But what do we know? One of the child is named. God is with us. And that's what ultimately makes them think that, that why they're successful and don't get defeated by Assyria and others. At, the, at that time, okay, King Rezin of Aram and King Pekah, son of Ramaya of Israel, advanced on children from battle. They besieged the house but could not overcome him. At that time, King Rezin of Aram recovered a life for Aram. He drove out the Judites from Aloth and Edomites, remember the Gentiles, the children of son. Edomites came to Aloth and settled there. And it's, it's still the case. Ahaz sent messengers to King Tilgath, Pillar of Assyria to say, I am your servant and your son. Come and deliver me from the hands of the king of Aram and from the hands of the king of Israel who are attacking me. The king of Assyria responded to his request. The king of Assyria marched against Damascus, captured it. He deported its inhabitants to Kerr and put resin to death. This goes back to... Uh, Divine inspiration of prophecy fulfilled. That was about kings and the north border and the southern border. Yes, yeah, they, they kind of go together. That's a great. I mean, you got to put your thinking cap on to keep up with it. This one, you know, you don't really need to kind of short form it for you. But uh, I love putting it together. In the twelfth year of King Ahaz of Judah, Hoshi, son of Allah, became king over Israel in Samaria for nine years. In the ninth year of Hoshi, the king of Assyria captured Samaria. He deported the Israelites to Assyria and settled them in, well, I guess this is where he does it, Hala at the river Habor, at the river Gozan, and in the towns of Medea. Ahaz slept with his fathers and was buried in the city in Jerusalem. His body was not brought to the tombs of the kings. Not quite sure why that is. So, when the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out with your son, Shir Jashub, to meet Ahaz at the end of the convent of the upper pool by the road of the fuller's field, and say to him, Be firm and be calm. Do not be afraid, and do not lose heart on account of those two smoking stubs of firebrands, on the, the ones marching against Jerusalem, and account of the raging of Risen and his Armenians, and the son of Ramiah, because the Armenians with Ephraim and the son of Ramiah have plotted against you, saying, We will march against Judah and invade and conquer it, and we will set up as king in the as king in it, the son of Tabil. Thus said my Lord God, it shall not succeed, it shall not come to pass. That's Isaiah chapter seven, verse thirty seven. And Isaiah said to us, Ahaz, Assuredly, my Lord will give you a son. 
of his own accord. Look, the young woman is with child. Young woman, not virgin, is with child and about to give birth to a son. Let her name him Emmanuel. By the time he learns to reject the bad and choose the good, people will be feeding on curds and honey. For before the lad knows to reject the bad and choose the good, the ground whose two kings you dread shall be abandoned. And when Isaiah writes, I was intimate with the prophetess, and she conceived and bore a son, and the Lord said to me, Name him Mahir Shalah Hashbez. For before the boy learns to call father and mother, the wealth of Damascus and the spoils of Samaria and the delights of Rezin and of his son Ramaya shall be carried off before the king of Assyria. The land, the Lord is saying that Emmanuel and Mahar Shalom Hashbaz are signs by their names importance by their individual maturation. The name with us is God is a sign for a Ahas that a ram in Israel will not succeed in their attack on Judah and Jerusalem, and that when Emmanuel learns right from wrong, a ram in Israel will be gone from the lands they rule. The name pillage Haitians, looting speeds, is a sign for Isaiah to watch for pillage. Yeah, he's living this. <laughs> He's there when they see everybody's fearing uh, Syria and the Armenians and uh, the northern kingdom, Ephraim, I guess it was, uh, are going to de defeat Judah. Okay, the name Pilatations Looting Speeds is a sign for Isaiah to watch for pillaging and looting in Damascus and Samaria when Mahar Shalal Hashbaz begins to talk. For before he calls Isaiah father, a ram in Israel will be carried off by the king of Assyria. Based on the historical account of the Lord's signs importance. Isaiah is speaking to Ahaz at the conduit of the upper pool no earlier than the 11th year of his reign. For in his 12th year, which is also the first year of King Hoshi of Israel, the king of Assyria responded to the request of Ahaz, marched against Damascus, captured it, and deported its inhabitants to Kir, and in the ninth year of King Hoshi of Israel, the king of Assyria captured Samaria, northern kingdom, and deported the Israelites to Assyria. Yeah, that's King Hoshi. And the hasten and speeded pillaging and looting of Aram and Samaria would have taken place during this departure, deporting the uh, inhabitants of the northern kingdom. This means <laughs> Emmanuel would have been about nine years old when he came to know right from wrong. Does that sound like Jesus? Your accounts of Jesus. He wasn't he's about nine, he figured out that you know you shouldn't throw apple cores at the rabbi at the synagogue. Because they yeah, nine years, eight years old. <laughs> Doesn't sound like the account of him. But he'd be nine when he came to know right from wrong. And the Mahir Shalah Hashbaz spoke his first words when the king of Assyria deported Israel. From the account of signs importance of the deportation of the northern kingdom and the Ram and the, that the southern kingdom was protected by God, the writer of Matthew says the birth of Jesus by a virgin was prophesied by the prophet according to the angel of the Lord in a dream of Joseph. There was no such prophecy. You just heard it all. 
It's got nothing to do with the virgin. It's got nothing to do with somebody named Jesus. <laughs> Emmanuel, God with us. I don't know what Jesus means. If he, if it's a portent of some kind, I don't know. There was no such prophecy. There was a young woman with child. And that child was named Emmanuel as a sign and portent that Judah would not be defeated and deported along with the northern kingdom. That's what the prophecies are about. Okay, next up, I'm just going to, I'm trying to keep this within a half hour. Uh, chapter 19, the Essenes embodied Jesus. And this is another good one. Um, it's a great argument. You know, I, in a, my past life, I was a lawyer, and I'll tell you, God really put this together in the real, as it happened way back when, knowing that it would be a part of today, the day of the Lord, and his wrath upon Christianity, you know, because it ends up with Jesus is a myth. And when you read this argument of God, you know, this is the, the only chapter where I don't have something like Ezekiel to fall back on when I talk about 53. Uh, and there's several, everything's backed up with other scripture. Or the scripture used is explained and it works out. But uh, this is just basically argument. And uh, I, I think he'd win any case that he walked into, if he were he a man, or if I did. And he, and he would help me, and he does, by the way. I wouldn't, uh, you know, I'm kind of like a B, B minus guy. You know, I, I wasn't a straight A kind of person in, in all my schooling, which was, uh, you know, high school, University of Texas A&M, and law school. You know, I had to study hard. Um, but I did well, and I did real good on the Texas bar. Uh, boy, up high uh, in percentile was, yeah. But uh, anyway. That'd be it. Hey, we didn't really get blurry that day. I didn't see it blur out one time. 